Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very uh, surprising episode. Uh, it's not even an episode, is it? This is what we do. Frontier put out a five-minute video. And what do content creators do? we we'll milk it for every penny it's got. Yes! Uh, we're reviewing the latest Dev Diary 2 that's came out. So what we're going to do, we're going to watch straight through it. Um, and then once we've done that, we'll review it and see just what kind of surprise is laying in the way, eh? All right, three, two, one... Gan. Violence. Mild blood. Hi, I'm Rich Newbold. I'm the game director on Jurassic World. What if I want more blood? <laughs> Let's talk to you about our most captivating and authentic Jurassic World experience yet. Many of us on the game team have grown up with the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movies in our lives. As a child, I watched Jurassic Park in the cinema and I fell in love with the dinosaurs on the screen. And then as an adult watching Jurassic World, it was so exciting. And this is a great opportunity for us to be part of that franchise and work alongside Universal and build upon the universe that they've created in the films, but allow us to use those iconic characters and dinosaurs and craft our own narrative for players to enjoy. To us, the Jurassic World franchise Ooh. is about capturing that sense of awe and wonder when you see a dinosaur for the first time. And I think that's something really magical about this franchise that we really wanted to bring to Jurassic World Evolution 2. Hi, my name is James Stant, and I'm the Dialogue Manager on Jurassic World Evolution 2. Dialogue Manager. In this dev diary, we're going to show you how we're bringing our authentic experience in two of our game modes, Campaign and Chaos Theory. We're really excited to show you what you can expect. Here we go. So you've got Campaign, Chaos, Challenge, I think, and Sandbox. I think there's uh, just Chaos is new, I think, out of those. Both authentic. the Campaign and the Chaos Theory mode are set in the Jurassic World universe. Jurassic World Evolution 2's campaign mode is set in the aftermath of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> Why did that practice all look so funny? Of and now wild across the United States of America. That freedom is now creating dangerous situations that the player is going to have to handle. I'm Dan Davies. I'm a principal designer on Jurassic World Evolution 2. The players recruited by the government agency who are responsible for tracking down these dinosaurs and safely capturing them. And it's not just about the safety of the people, it's about the safety of the dinosaurs too. The player will be in charge of this initiative, working for the Department of Fish and Wildlife, as they work alongside iconic franchise I guess. characters. We're bringing Moses back characters fish. players are going to recognize right. from the Jurassic World movies. Claire Deering and Owen Grady have been hired for their expertise in dealing with dinosaurs in these kinds of situations. They're going to accompany you as you travel around the United States, capturing and containing the dinosaurs now out in the wild. We are so excited to be bringing back some of our own characters. We have Dr. Kajal Dua, Isaac Clement, Cabot Finch, and George Lambert. These characters will provide support and guide the player towards success. The player's role in campaign mode is very different to the other modes that we have in the game. Instead of focusing on building theme parks and using the dinosaurs to make as much money as possible, they're now dealing with the dinosaurs that are in the wild across the United States. This involves capturing them and then safely containing them in facilities that the player has built. Hello, my okay. name is Adam Woods and I'm the executive producer on Jurassic World Evolution 2. Hmm. As you can imagine, the player will face a number of challenges. The dangerous dinosaurs are just the beginning. They will be facing calamities, snowstorms, sandstorms. We are also introducing a number of new injuries and illnesses that can affect the well-being of the dinosaurs. The and these will be another obstacle that the player will have to face. This is completely uncharted territory. They're away from the confines of tropical islands, away from the Jurassic World gates. This is completely new, it's bigger, and it's more challenging for the player. Okay, okay. Chaos okay. Theory Mode allows players to be a part of the Jurassic World franchise. Alternate timelines explore how key events could have panned out differently now that the player is in a decisive role. The players will experience a what-if scenario from each of the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movies. They'll be in charge of either building a theme park or a facility based on that movie. For example, in the Lost World Jurassic Park scenario, oh, they're going to try to succeed where others have failed <laughs> and bring the so San happy. Diego part to the masses. Chaos Theory Mode for us was really exciting as developers because it was a great opportunity for us to go back to movies that we've really loved and grown up with and provide players that opportunity to go and experience these what-if scenarios and wish fulfillment of being in those moments from the films as they have their own impact in what's happening in these scenarios. Uh, Across okay. both Campaign and Chaos Theory Mode, the player is going to be encountering a large number of prehistoric species. We've worked really hard to ensure the species are authentic to the level or scenario that you're in. For example, you'll be coming face to face with the Indominus Rex in the Jurassic World Chaos Theory oh, scenario. Ooh. I'm really looking forward to the players enjoying these up close moments with the dinosaurs from the ground level. It really gives a unique and different perspective to the scenarios. 
I'm very excited to see players experience these new original stories that were crafted in campaign mode and chaos theory mode, seeing dinosaurs in new locations as they work alongside these characters and the stories that we've created. I'm really excited for players to experience these iconic characters in our original story. I'm really excited about the players experiencing the chaos theory scenarios. And, and I'm really excited. Movie moments their own. <laughs> Are you excited? It's I'm really Jurassic excited. Whether Jurassic Park San Diego to the masses <laughs> or building their own version of Jurassic World. Jurassic World stories are so iconic and we are very proud to have created our own to be part of that and we're looking forward to sharing that with you. I feel like he's become the poster child for this in a way. <laughs> I see him in every of these uh, dev diaries. Well, there you have. I guess maybe do they have like a... A kind of poster child for the original? I think it was just Bo, wasn't it? He shows Indominus Rex, but then there's something said, and I was distracted by Indominus Rex doing Indominus Rex things. So here we go. So, yes, you got that. And then what does he say here? For example, you'll be coming face to face with the Indominus Rex in the Jurassic World Chaos Theory scenario. Aha! There you go. Okay, so it's the Jurassic World Chaos Theory scenario. So we're going to have Chaos Theory from... I assume all of the franchise, all of those. So that's interesting. So what have we learned? Let's let's play. We'll, we'll play obviously without uh, without uh, any sound on here now. So we the first shot we see is something that I think we've seen before. This was like Washington, uh, where we see the Brachiosauruses. Um, I'm kind of just curious as to seeing that. So here we go. This is San Diego. Because we've got the um, we've got this over here, which is the auditorium or whatever you want to call it, and then you have all these enclosures. You've got is that a viewing vent? What is this? Because this is a a what you might call it. This is the tour, the tour group, or the sorry, the tour vehicle or whatever you go. I'm assuming it's the Jurassic Park cars because or the Explorers because we've seen those. And there's like a a, a track radio running running in the middle of the road here. Um, so if it goes that way, it's got to go round another way. And this is something I didn't mention. I don't know whether other people picked up on it. Um, I saw it and forgot to mention it in my last video. But in one of the pictures, you see that they actually... Because if you remember in Jurassic World Evolution 1, the tracks couldn't go over paths, which is very constricting. But now you can, because if we see here, you've got a path running all the way down the middle, and it continues all this way to the helipad. Now, you've got this tour vehicle which goes that way, and you know, we know that there will be a, another tour going this way. And this is exactly what happens. It goes across the path, and then into an enclosure and goes out over here and there you go this is what happens when a, a tour goes across a path you get a little uh, crosswalk there and then the tour continues up and goes all the way around and goes into another enclosure somewhere we've also got like a visitor center building here uh and then you've got like hotels and uh, it seems to be in an enclosure, or like, sorry, this is an enclosure, so it's almost like this hotel resort that they've made there is like in an enclosure, so you, you get to stay and view the dinosaurs and stuff. What would be really cool would be if you can have dinosaurs in, you know, on the path and stuff, as long as they're a security rating, because we see now that when these dinosaurs are lifted, that they have a security rating, like one, two, three, or four, or whatever. And the fences also, when they're selected, have a security rating. So you can easily now see whether or not that dinosaur is compatible, or that fence is compatible with that dinosaur, which is really going to be helpful. But I also kind of want to have dryosaurs running around in like this hotel resort area. That would be really cool. Um, You've also got this big round one here. Uh, that's obviously another one. Okay, so we'll, we'll carry on. Move on a little bit further. Uh, and here we go. So we've seen what happens when Carnotaurus coexist. Uh, they do this headbutting animation and then one shoves the other one off and, you know, they go on the merry way. This, however... Because when I was playing, unless this has just been added in, but I don't think it was. Because when I played Jurassic World Evolution 2, they already showed this kind of animation, but it wasn't Carnotaurus. It was um, an Allosaur and another dinosaur, the Xinjiangosaurus, I think it was, or something like that. Changosaurus. They did this exact animation here, this one. So they go, and then they do a hit, and then they turn. Now, whether or not that is an actual attack or whether it's just a very well choreographed dance whatever you want to call it they've been watching too much black pink or bts and like oh let's do this <laughs> i don't think so but 
It also shows that dinosaurs are going to have multiple of the same animations. And this, to me, you know, we've seen Allosaurus have it, the Xinjiangosaurus have it, the Carnotaurus have it. However, the Carnotaurus might have their own unique interaction with butting heads. Maybe they won't. Maybe Allosaurus and Xinjiang will also have that. But this, I think, is only reserved if dinos or four dinosaurs that don't get on with each other. Uh, because I, when I saw the Allosaurus and Carnotauruses in, you know, in the same enclosure in my playthrough, they didn't do any of this. So this to me shows if Carnotauruses are, are not happy with each other or maybe Carnivores are not happy with each other. They do this sort of behavior, um, which is they, they sort of rotate around each other, a bit like we've seen before in Jurassic World Evolution 1. And then they do a... La. They do like, you know, like a romantic couple. They cross their arms and drink. <laughs> but obviously it's nothing like that. Um, whether or not they do damage to each other, I'm not too sure. Uh, there. But I, it is a bit of a shame that that's what's, what's, what's happening there. Um, and this is beautiful now. This could be a Hainosaur. It could be a Tylosaur. It's definitely a Mosasaur. Um, and it's... It's interesting, right? Because I think I don't think Mosasaur is the biggest Mosasaur. I'm really not too sure. I think Tylosaur is actually. Um, but I'm I'm putting my bets on it either being a Tylosaur or a Hainosaur. I just had a quick look before um, at the only other game that we've had aquatics in, you know, apart from you know a, a universal game, and that being Jurassic World the game or uh, Jurassic Park Builder, which is now extinct. Um, and in an ex uh, sorry park builder, we had Hainosaur and Tylosaur. Uh, so that that could be what these are. They, they, I mean, it's definitely a mose. So if you look at that tail, that fluke there, is it possible it's a ichthyosaurid? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it is. I think it's probably most likely another mosasaur, bringing our tally up to five. I think is we've got mosasaur. Ophthalmosaur, you know, the, the one we had most recent. Uh, Plesiosaur, um, the Attenborosaurus, which is another Plesiosaur. And now the um, Tylosaur or Hainosaur, whatever this is. Um, so that's interesting. We've got, so that's, I think, one confirmed here. One new dinosaur right there is that guy. Here we've got another look at the, the beautiful San Diego. And can I just say how nice it is to see some ferns? I don't know whether we had Jurassic World Evolution having ferns, but the, the plant is just so iconic of the Lost World and, and the Jurassic franchise that when I was a kid and I'd walk around in, you know, forested places and I would see the fern, you know, as they uncoil like that, I'd be like, oh, that's like it was in the movie! You know, I'd have geeked out over a plant. But it's, it, it's just so iconic. And seeing, you know, this Lost World, um, what, you know, this what if story and also Lost World plants, uh, but I think they're probably just going to be in the whole game. I don't think they're just going to be in this scenario here. Um, um, so we saw also compies have been confirmed as well. Uh, that's interesting. So let's have a look what else we got. I mean, I'd love to see your faces, fellas, but uh, I'm not here for you, unfortunately. So here we go. We have a, I think this is when they're talking about the campaign mode. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a what if this is. So the, the interesting thing with Jurassic World Evolution, it was, it was like the campaign was always the same. You go to an island, you make a park, get it five star, done. And obviously they don't want to do that again. And I don't want to do that again, if I'm honest. So what they're doing for the campaign mode is we're going to different parts of America, like we saw with Washington, the first one. Uh, this is Arizona. And you've got to ensure the stegosaur have 90% comfort, ensure the stegosaur are visible from the research viewing gallery. So it is very similar to what we've done before. Except for, I'm assuming now we have to go out and find dinosaurs. A bit like when I did the playthrough. <laughs> there he is! That's... <laughs> hey, hey guys! <laughs> I love that. Uh, so it looks like, you know, we have to now go out into the wilds and dart dinosaurs, enclose them, make them happy, make them viewable, fix any problems with them, and do that over and over again. I'm hoping that they do more with it. I don't want to just do that and that be the thing, and I do it a million times. So here it is. You've got the fish and wildlife uh, that you go out and dart. I love it. When the darts here glitches out, it goes, <laughs> It just sort of flies away. Like, <laughs> and has a little uh, panic attack. And so obviously this is one of the dinosaurs that we go out and find. And you've got the allosaur there being dropped into its enclosure. Um, and then you've got it sort of scratching its head there. Like, no, no interaction that's quite nice uh, to see definitely uh from you know uh, uh here we go here we go you got the, the level two fences so this is what i mean about the security rating so if we had a dinosaur that had zero security right 
I really hope, I don't think it's going to be in the game because I don't think it was meant to be in JPOG, but you could kind of bypass it. Having dinosaurs, you know, wandering over in the same enclosure. You know, you go to a zoo and you might walk through an exhibit like that, but with dinosaurs. And I really don't think we're going to get that. And I so wish we did because, um, you know, it's, it seems like with JPOG and Planet Zoo, there's variables to it. There's different things you can do. But this, it's very like, you know, the, the, the what was it? You know, you put the shapes into the holes. That's a square shape that goes in that one. You know what I mean? And this feels like this is the same thing with Jurassic World Evolution 2. That, and the same with the first one. That you can only play it a certain way and that's it. I really hope that there's more to it, but... From everything I've seen so far, except for dinosaur behaviors and a little bit of cosmetics and stuff, it feels like Jurassic World Evolution, but with more stuff. What it should have had in from the beginning. So there's Deliver Stegosauruses. There you go. There was how many? Like four of them there being uh, transported. Uh, and here we go. You've got... Uh, so this, it says missing rocks. You've got binoculars. So I think this is... Does this perform a status check on the baryonics? Which seems to be approved there. So... You don't just have these things, you know, the, the viewing outpost, but you can actually, if you don't want to pay for it, you can, you know, check on the Baryonyx itself um, to see how it's doing with the binoculars. That's interesting. Here's the one that we did, I think, because this is the Conotauruses. Different viewing vent looking cosmetic. I think obviously that's to do with the campaign. Maybe it's a campaign exclusive. Also, another little interaction there that I've just noticed right now is the Conotaurus scratching its head. Like, ye ye ye. So they've definitely put a lot more effort and thought into how the dinosaurs interact and um, are believable. And and that's something that I think when it came to Jurassic uh, Operation Genesis or any Jurassic game that I've ever played, uh, people were always fascinated and wanted to see uh, different dinosaurs animations. And um, it was very clear in Jurassic Park, op uh, Jurassic, Park uh, Jurassic Park Builder that when a dinosaur had the same animation as something else, it was like, oh. But when it had a unique animation, it was like, whoa, that's amazing. And that is going to, you know, tr transfer to a game that, you know, Jurassic Park, uh, Jurassic Park Builder was very basic. This is very complicated. Um, but it's still, it's, a sta it's the same concept. It's still dinosaurs. We want to see them more realistic. And we want to see all the, the randomness that can happen. Uh, and I really feel like that's something that isn't happening in, in Evolution 2. Which is a bit of a shame. Because with JPOG, you had all these random things that you wouldn't have accounted for. So, you know, maybe a, a Kentrosaur would be scared of large herbivores. So it would whap its tail in, in defense. But then when it would whap its tail, it might whack other herbivores. That would scare them and that would make them act out and stuff like that. That was all stuff that, you, you know, maybe wasn't planned for but happened. And I, I want more stuff like that in this game, in Evolution 2. I want more randomness. I want to see what happens when a raptor is put in with, you know, uh, a triceratops, an ankylosaur. And for it not to be the same thing. I don't want them to do the, you know, the, the circle animation and then bite. And it feels like maybe that's what will happen. We still have a circle animation, but instead of bite, ow, that hurts, back in, do a circle, bite, it hurts, and do, repeat, repeat. It looks like now we're going to get maybe different animations, but still the same, if you know what I mean. So they're still going to circle each other, but maybe this time they'll do a little choreographed dance. And then next time they'll do a little bite sort of thing. Um, and I think we saw that there was some footage that somebody recorded of getting a Celia physis and they did a fight with each other um, and I think it was very similar um, like it wasn't you know they bite they go back they bite they go back it was the same base you know the little different animations and I feel like that's probably what's gonna happen here obviously the best animations like in JPOG were unique ones to T-Rex taken on Ankylosaur T-Rex the most iconic T-Rex taken on Spinosaur where it could go either way um, which they kind of got this in there's a car wash. They kind of got this in Evolution when they put the T-Rex and Raptor kill animation, except for they only had the T-Rex kill the Raptor when it pulled it back and threw it. There should be the other way around, like Raptors killing T-Rexes. That would be very fascinating to see. And maybe a pack of Raptors could take on a T-Rex like um, Jim Kirkland had mentioned. Um, so here we go, a nice closer look at the auditorium. 
uh, there. And I think we saw in the trailer that you could put the T-Rex inside. And it does appear, if you look closely, that there's a fence there. And I think this is the T-Rex enclosure or some sort of enclosure here. And there you go, the left, you can see here more of the passing of the tour vehicle going into the enclosure. And obviously, it would, I think you can see it go around there. And then it exits over here and probably goes through this one. So you've got this lovely uh, tour opportunity to, you know, go through paths and go all the way around to a big circle and come back, which is great. Also, you've got uh, a way for people to get in. So maybe this is more than just a scenario piece, you know, a decoration as you were. So maybe it is a usable thing that, um, you know, people can view things. And it is the T-Rex. There you go. So the T-Rex can actually enter this thing, but um, whether or not that does anything, I don't know, maybe it's just a big viewing gallery or maybe you could hold, I'd say you'd hold battle arenas, but I don't think there's really much space in there to hold a battle arena. Um, and I think we're about to get to, oh, here we go. So this is the compi. These are the compies actually. So if you look down here the, by the beta in game, you've got one hopping along there. Do these little hop hops. And then in the middle of the screen, you've got another one that, yeah, there he is. So there are more compies just hopping about. <laughs> just make something small, make it hop, it's beautiful. So. So far, we've got two Jurassic Chaos or Chaos Theory events. We've got the San Diego, and from what they say here, we've also got the Jurassic World Chaos Theory. So this makes me wonder: will we get one for every, um, you know, every what you might call it, every movie? So this is Jurassic World. You've got the Lost World. So what could be Jurassic Park three, and what could be Jurassic Park three? Would I assume maybe? Uh, site B and Jurassic Park 1 well we kind of had the what if scenario which was the DLC for evolution uh, so I don't know I don't know what I mean, they've got I mean now we, we can basically just think what could there be what could the next you know if you think about a what if it might be in the game so here this is interesting it looks like they're going to just put you in control of a jurassic world here um and this is the 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 chaos theory you've got the mosasaur lagoon there you've also got the main street of the uh, innovation center and stuff you've also got another enclosure there probably a tour vehicle it looks like up here and this is another tour going through here so this is frontiers Jurassic World. We, I mean, I made my own when I, you know, I, I did what I did. Um, so it'll be interesting to see after seeing how many people made their own Jurassic Worlds and how accurate it was to, you know, Frontier actually making their own. Uh, one thing I loved about JPOG was there was a mission to recreate Jurassic Park and they gave you Isla Nublar. Just the shape. The silhouette, it was completely flat, I think, if I remember right. But the shape, and that was so cool. Um, so it'd be really nice to, you know, see what they can do here. Um, and what the differences are. Because I'm just having a quick look around. Don't really notice anything too dissimilar, although they've made a massive Avery. I thought, you know, just one Avery would maybe be enough. But no, they've, they've made a huge hexagon of an Avery there. And this is where we see, this is obviously the what if scenario. Oh, there you go, another lovely shot, the Jurassic World gates entering. You've got the small hotels on display here, which is interesting, and the monorail. And here it is, so this is probably what we're gonna be dealing with in this scenario, is what if the Indominus Rex is housed and everything goes right? You know, how'd you, you know, you know, what if, you know, it, this didn't go wrong. Um, and Indominus Rex looks very different. Um, now, I put a lot of mods in from Evolution. The Indominus Rex that I remember isn't probably the right one, because I've, like I said, I've done loads of mods. But this guy, this looks really different to the Indominus Rex that I remember at all, even vanilla, I think. Um, it's It's got a lot more texture to it. It's a lot more knobbly. It's, uh, its head looks a lot shorter. I don't know. Maybe it is. It's just not what I'm used to. I need to... Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes. That looks that looks quite good. In fact, actually, it's got scars on its um, uh, face. So maybe this what-if story is... The what-if has to do with Indominus Rex breaking out and then being recaptured. And that's why it has its scars. That could be interesting. Another lovely uh, little nod here is the, the kawaii background. Uh, no, I don't mean kawaii. <laughs> I mean uh, ka kawaii, which is where they filmed Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. And where a lot of films are filmed there. Um, Pearl Harbor being one of them. But the iconic thing about kawaii is that they have these amazing hills in the background. You watch any movie like Jumanji. 
you'll see these in it. Um, and they've actually made them in the game, which is very nice, a lovely touch. The tour vehicles going over the path there. So that's really just going to allow a lot more uh, customizability there, which is so much, so much better than what we did before. Because, I mean, remember, buildings don't work if they don't have a path. So you, when that you're making a tour vehicle, you're very restricted, but now you're not. So that's going to be really uh, helpful. And I love, oh, I love the little computer. I just happened about so cute. So anyway, guys, we're going to wrap the video there. I don't want to take up any more of your time. Uh, I don't think there's really any need to. I mean, we've seen maybe what the campaign's going to entail, what these Jurassic Chaos Theory, I keep saying Jurassic, the Chaos Theory is going to entail. Uh, three confirmed new species. I think these are patchy cephalosauruses. Um, and the tour vehicles are back, or at least the um, the explorers are back. The, you know, the, the class six are there but if you enjoyed this video guys leave a like let me know what you're hyped for and what if there's anything that you think they should add or change i know we're, we're what 50 days out of look at my invisible watch there of jurassic world evolution 2 releasing um, and then maybe we'll start to hear rumblings of the new and final jurassic world dominion movie to hit cinemas next year uh so yeah if you enjoyed the video leave a like and until next time i'll see you cutie beaver baby legends later <laughs> bye bye